We're going to look at how this iLogic rule uh, works in order to scale a path with all its parameters, uh, sketches, intact. Um, and so we've got an iLogic rule in here called scale part. And what I actually want to do is to show you um, this part in, in action on uh, five different parts. So I've got some got five part files down in the bottom here that I used in order to help me write this code and to help me debug it and make sure it worked with a wide variety of parts made with different um, sort of sort of modeling techniques. So I only made um, one of these parts myself. Um, the rest of them I um, you know I either downloaded or got off colleagues and things like that. So um, first we're going to look at this part which is quite a simple part, see how it works on that. Then we're going to look at it on a a more complicated part but this part is important because this is quite a parametric part with lots of equations between parameters, links between parameters, also some multi-value parameters and a whole pattern which is also important that the scale part rule works well with all those kind of things and doesn't mess up any links and so on and so forth. Um, so then we're going to look at it on this part file which is a vehicle chassis um, frame uh, and this one's important because it's quite a large part so we've got about 100 features in our feature browser here also we've got some you know sort of more slightly more complicated profiles here and some more intricate stuff going on so we want to see how that's handled also some rectangular hole patterns um, up here and here and so on and so forth so we want to see how the rule handles these um, and then I, just for the sake of balance, I want to look at how it handles um, certain limitations. So we've got a complicated machined rotor here, but uh, this has got some threaded holes in it. We'll look at how the rule handles those. And then lastly, um, everyone's favorite uh, Autodesk Inventor Essentials tutorial part here. A nice uh, handle part. Um, and we'll look at limitation with regards to text and things like that as well. So um, hopefully a fairly well-rounded view of how this uh, rule works and limitations of it. So uh, without any further ado, um, let's let's have a crack with this rule on this part here. So um, before I run this rule, I'm just going to go to inspect and inspect distance and measure the distance between this face and this face. So uh, it becomes apparent that this uh, this part may have been modelled uh, in imperial units. Uh, the distance total distance of this part is 62.865 mil. So let's say it's 63. Um, so when we multiply it by two in this case, we're going to expect about 126 millimeters. So um, so let's let's have a crack at this and let's run it. So choose my scale part rule here. I'm going to right click on it and hit run rule. So what do we get now? Well, first dialog box we get up tells us, or asks us rather, for um, the scale um, multiplication value that we want for this part. So um, a couple of criteria for that. It's got to be a numeric value. Um, so obviously if I type in a non-numeric value here uh, and hit enter, then it's not going to let me uh, do it with that. So it'll just give me the same dialog box coming up again. Um, if I type in a value that uh, isn't greater than zero, like zero, and hit enter, then uh, it doesn't play ball either. Just get the same dialog box. If I type in a value um, that is equal to one, so uh, if I type in one, then obviously you can't scale apart by one. There's no point. So it also gives me this dialog box coming up again. So, and the last thing on there, Enter C to cancel. So oftentimes you might run an iLogic rule or uh, mistakenly or realize that you want to cancel it after you've run it. So to avoid messing up this part, you can hit C to cancel that if you want to uh, at any, well, at this point. If I hit C, then it will escape out of that rule and, and won't run it. But if I go and run that rule again, and this time we'll do it for real. So if I enter the value two there, then we'll try and uh, double the size of this part. Okay, so if I hit enter, then what it's going to do, the rule is going to uh, go through and find the number of whole features in this part. If it finds any whole features, it's going to ask us if we want to scale those as well. So do we want to um, scale the three whole features as well? Um, 
and a note about threaded features which we'll look about at later but if I say that I do in fact want to include the whole features and hit yes then it's going to go through and it's going to uh, we can see that part's doubled but we'll measure it in a second but if we take a look at the appearance of this part you can see that the fillets are all still on there everything seems to be fine we do get a dialog box up saying the following threaded features could not be scaled obviously MPT threads, UNF threads, metric threads are going to be very difficult to scale those when you take into account thread pitches and so on and so forth so it gives us a heads up these threads, it will find any threads in the part and tell us that these need a manual update so if I hit OK we will see that those thread features of thread 1 and thread 3 are in fact do actually have a uh, need an update there because they don't currently match the size of the hole as the whole size has been doubled so that all makes sense so we'll just have to go in there and change those from M8 threads to perhaps M16 threads if uh, if that was what we wanted but if I hit distance here to measure again we're expecting about 126 millimeters aren't we so if I go on there then yeah that has all um, has all been scaled effectively we've got a part that's double as big now and all of our um, all of our sketches in here if I take a look at some of the sketches this is a, a bit of a strange part we have here but um, got some slightly strange uh, dimensions going on right at the start but all of our sketches in here are fully functional this isn't like a derived part so um, so that seems to have worked fine uh, let's uh, let's move on and let's just check something else so I'm going to close this part and let's look at it on the alloy wheel part. So uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to hit um, well. Let's take a look in the par parameters box here. So if I bring up parameters, then you'll see for this part we do have slightly more complex uh, scenario here. We've got parameters that are used in equations, rim width divided by 25. We've got some quite compli complex sort of links between parameters going on. So um, a bit more of a challenge for our, our logic rule here. And obviously circular pattern, we don't want that to, uh, to turn into 10 bolt holes, for instance, if we times this by two, we want that to stay the same. So um, if I hit run rule here, I'm gonna times this three times bigger. And we'll just, uh, um, we'll just see what what we get if we do that. Um, so if I hit three there, and it's found one feature, one whole feature, sorry I should say, this is five features, but the whole feature, there's one whole feature and then it's patterned five times. So do I want to scale the one whole feature as well? If I say yes, and we'll try this both ways here in a moment, but if I say yes, I do want to scale this whole feature, then it's gonna, times this all by three tell us it's successful and that has all been scaled if we go through here um, and now see what's happened to our parameters then we'll see that uh, we'll just take a little look and see what's going on with some of our sketches in here as well but um, if I have a little look in here let's for instance see if we can still make some changes here so the number of spokes is nine but if I change the number of spokes to say six spokes, we'll see that that still works. So any, you know, most of the associativity in your part should still remain uh, functional. Uh, there might be errors to that uh, or exceptions to that, I should say. But um, that should still work fine. If I go into uh, a, uh, a sketch, for instance, let's have a look at. You know, we had an original profile sketch here. Um, if I go into that original profile sketch, you'll see that all of that sketch is still functional. You know, we can still go in here and chain values and so on and so forth. It's all still uh, perfectly legitimate um, sketch geometry. Okay, uh, it's all still fully constrained. So I'm going to finish that sketch. So let's um, let's go in here and let's have a look at our frame um, dot ipt. So for this one, I'm going to run our scale rule. Um, I'm going to perhaps times this by 
five, what I want to take a look at here is particularly this geometry and the, circ uh, the, the patterned holes here. So you can see these holes. I'm going to times this whole thing by five. It's found two whole features to scale. Do I want to include them in the scaling? Well, initially I'm going to hit yes, um, but then I'm going to try something else in a moment. So I'm going to scale this whole lot by five. Um, so it's told me that it can't sc um, scale the threaded features. That's fine. But if I've times this all by five, you'll see that those holes are still there. These holes are still functional. Um, they've all been times by five. But what I want to do now is to uh, run this rule again, scale it by 0.2 to scale it back down again. Um, so that should right scale it right back down again. Um, and now I want to scale it without scaling the holes. So rather than having these holes, you know, uh, this sort of reference size to the bar, I'm going to not scale the hole. So I'm going to run the wall, scale it by five times, and not include the whole features in the scaling. Okay, so we'd expect these holes to be tiny in relation to the uh, to the part size uh, after it's been scaled. Okay, so that's all been scaled. And now, as expected, these holes are tiny holes still. Still, they're the, exactly the same um, shape holes, but still, but excuse me, but now, but now tiny with relation to uh, to where they were before. And the same with these holes here. But what I want to do now is to um, actually save this part as a new part and just bring in the other part as reference so that we can see. Um, see this the um, difference in in geometry so we scaled that five times didn't we so I'm gonna save this as a new part and then what I'm actually gonna do is to go to manage tab and I'm going to derive the original frame part into this part so that we can compare them here so I'm just gonna hit OK to that so here's our original part down here before it was scaled I'm just going to go um, and move that so that we can see it a bit better. So I'm just going to use my move tool in here. And move that maybe 2,000 millimeters. Okay, so this is the original part based on the part that I scaled. Um, let's just take a little look at the geometry in here. So that is what the original geometry was like. If we take a look at our scaled part, that's pretty good. You know, we've got some other stuff going on here, but as you can see, um, the part has been scaled. If we look at this stuff with our fillets down here um, and some chamfers, and we look at that here as well, you can see that that has worked completely seamlessly. Um, and if I scale this part back down, um, 0.2, um, and I don't want to include the whole features in the scaling. If I run that back down, then what we should have now is two parts side by side. Um, if I run this, if I make this, move this distance again, then we should have these two parts as absolutely identical parts in here. And after that's been scaled up by five and back down by uh, point two again, so that's worked very nicely indeed. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Let's just look at a couple of limitations in here. Then I mentioned that we we're going to do this. So if I run the scale part on this part here, you'll see that we've got a couple of holes that actually have threads created as uh, actual threaded holes. So these aren't holes with threads added afterwards. They're actually holes with the thread as part of it. And if we try and run it on this then these holes won't scale at all. It's not just the threads that won't work. So uh, if I try and times this one by, um, you know, uh, four, for instance, um, it's got found seven hole features. Do I want to include those in the scaling? Well, even if I click yes, then it's not going to uh, be able to um, multiply those threaded holes. So we do actually get a, an inkling that that's going to happen. There's a bit of error checking in there, but if I hit OK, we'll see these threaded holes um, haven't managed to update. 
So these, these ones here, that threaded hole can't be updated, this one can't be updated. The rest of the part though, if you take a look at it, um, and if we did a save as scale four times, and if we actually derive the other, the old part into here, so manage, derive, let's bring the original rotor in there, uh, let's check what we've got going on here. So here's the original one and there's the scaled one. So as you can see that's looking pretty good. Um, we don't really have anything wrong with that except for those threaded holes there. Otherwise that's been completely successful there, timesing it by four. Um, so very last thing to show you. Um, what do we do with text here? Well, as you can guess, this is another limitation. If I try and run this rule, I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna times it by 10 nuts. Um, so I'm gonna hit 10 and hit enter there. Um, it's found one whole feature. Um, I'm gonna try and include it, but it's a tapped hole, so we know that's not gonna work. So if I hit yes, we get that error message saying it can't modify a whole size. I'll hit okay. All these fillets and stuff will still work fine tried to modif multiply it by 10 times so I'm, I'm doing this is uh, quite an extreme one so part scale by 10 was successful now if I zoom out a bit let's have a look so the part still looks good uh, we still got all our filleting everything's functional shape wise uh, including some more complex sweeps and things but obviously this hole hasn't been able to update so that's still the old thread size in there and of course our text up here so this still says autodesk um, essentials in here but um not quite to the uh, required text size here so um, that would of course need to be changed that on emboss but uh, just wanted to fill you in on a limitation there one final thing just so that you're aware if i go back to this alloy wheel part file you may have noticed before um, but uh, if I go into the parameters for this, um, the way that the rule works, it does actually add some values into the comment fields here, which are used as reference to make sure that the parameters come out right. So um, if you use comments in your parameters, you'll have to be careful about that because it, it will actually override them with reference values in here. Um, so just be aware of that if you like to put comments in for your parameters. Well, I hope you enjoy this scale part rule and let me know if you can think of any other uses for it. Have a wonderful day.